good evening all welcome to the discussion session for spotter set 2 i hope you have write down the answers of all the spotters here you can see this is the radiograph where you can see there is loss of visualization of the left dome of diaphragm herniation of the bowel loops from the abdomen into the thorax and shift, significant shift of the mediastinum on to right side so this is a classical case of congenital diaphragmatic hernia coming to next spotter you can see there is hyperinflated lung hyperlucent lung in the left upper and mid zones no cystic and solid components noted within the lesion and there is shift of mediastinum to right side so this is a case of congenital lobar overinflation that is clo previously called as congenital lobar emphysema the clo may be associated with aberrant left pulmonary artery and also with other congenital heart defects like ventricular septal defect pda and tetralogy of fallot so other di close differentials for this congenital lobar overinflation is secam but now it is considered as congenital pulmonary adenomatoid malformation that is cpam coming to next spotter you can see there are lack lack of aeration of the bilateral lung fields classically known as white lungs or white out lungs this is due to diffuse granular opacities or ground glass opacities symmetrically distributed in bilateral lung fields so this is classically seen due to surfactant deficiency in case of surfactant deficiency disorder because the immature type 2 pneumocytes cannot produce the surfactant because of lack of surfactant there is increased surface tension in the alveoli which causes collapse so patients may have decreased lecithin to sphingomelin ratio even surfactant treatment and oxygen supply is helps in this cases so this is white out lungs and remember in case of hyaluronic membrane disease or respiratory distress syndrome secondary to surfactant deficiency disorder coming to the next spotter you can see there is rhizomelic mesomelic and acromelic dwarfism there is narrow thorax and classically you can see short humeri short femori these short humeri and short femori they mimic telephone handle appearance so this is nothing but a thanatophoric dysplasia case which is a lethal skeletal dysplasia it is most common lethal skeletal dysplasia followed by osteogenesis imperfecta type 2 there are two recognized subtypes type 1 is marker under development of the skeleton that is telephone handle femori or femori are seen the type 2 e is classically you can see the presence of clover leaf skull which is a distinctive feature limb shortening is milder and bowing is not a feature so you can see this is the telephone handle appearance of the femori and even the femori so this is a classical case of thanatophoric dysplasia next spotter you can see there are bilateral hilar enlargement is bilateral hilar lymph node enlargement so you have to remember the differential diagnosis for bilateral hilar endopathy so the common diagno differentials are tuberculosis even histoplasmosis coccidiomycosis even in some malignancy like lymphoma that is most common in hodgkin's lymphoma than non hodgkin's lymphoma even in inorganic dust diseases like silicosis berylliosis and even heart failure so remember all the differentials for bilateral hilar endopathy so this bilateral hilar adenopathy along with is also seen in sarcoidosis coming to the next spotter you can see retrocardiac density which is causing siloting of the medial half of the diaphragm but it is not causing siloting of the heart border so this is a retrocardiac density this is classical of left lower lobe collapse coming to the next spotter you can see there are bilateral pleural calcifications this is bilateral pleural calcifications this bilateral pleural calcifications are nothing but calcified pleural plaques from as asbestosis exposure typically with sparing of the costophrenic angles so there is sparing of the costophrenic angles and other cause like hemothorax even infections involving the pleura that is pyothorax and emphysema tubercular pleuritis previous surgeries 
and radiation therapy can also cause bilateral pleural calcifications or unilateral pleural calcifications. So symmetrical bilateral pleural calcifications with sparing of the costophrenic angles, remember asbestosis. Coming to next quarter, you can see free air under the right dome of diaphragm, even free air under the left dome of diaphragm, even free air is seen encircling the bowel loops. So this is a case of neoperitoneum and when you can see the free air both outside and inside the bowel, you can clearly demarcate the bowel wall. This is called regular sign. So remember regular sign when the air outlines both the bowel in the inside and outside when the bowel is surrounded by air, you can clearly depict the wall of the bowel. So this is regular sign greater than 1000 ml should be there nearly should be there to demonstrate this regular sign. Sometimes you can see pseudo regular sign in pseudo neoperitoneum. And also remember other signs of neoperitoneum like cupola sign, football sign, inverted V sign. So read all the signs for neoperitoneum on plane radiograph. Coming to next spotter, you can see a radiopaque density overlapping the left hemithorax, broad base towards the pleura with eccentric rim calcification and even causing significant mass effect and mediastinal shift. So this is a chronic calcified empyema which is classically seen in tuberculosis. Other differential can be considered calcified pleural mass. Coming to next quarter, you can see multiple calcified nodular lesions scattered in the neck, even in the hilar region, in the axilla and even mediastinal. So these are nothing but multiple calcified hilar, axillary, mediastinal lymph nodes so this is a case of tuberculosis. So calcified lymph nodes in the axillary, hilar and mediastinal, axillary, mediastinal, cervical and even hilar lymph nodes which is a classical case of tuberculosis. Other causes can be silicosis, sarcoidosis, histoplasmosis, even treated lymphomas, sometimes in metastasis, amyloidosis and Castleman's disease. So remember the differentials for calcified lymph nodes. Coming to next case, you can see the left Apex of the heart is on the right side, stomach bubble is on the right side. So this is a classical case of situs inversus. If there is situs inversus associated with sinusitis and bronchiectasis, remember cartaginous syndrome. Coming to next quarter, you can see there is a soft tissue density in the neck and even round to oval nodular soft tissue density scattered in bilateral lung fields. So these are classical for cannonball appearance. So these are nothing but cannonball metastasis likely primary from the thyroid. So what are these cannonball metastases? This cannonball metastases remember the cannons which are used in the Ferengis. We used to see in the old movies during wars. So those are called as cannonballs. So these metastases, cannonball metastases can be a secondary from the primary carcinomas like renal cell carcinoma, chorea carcinoma, follicular carcinoma of thyroid and less common primary tumors like prostatic carcinoma, endometrial carcinoma, synovial sarcoma and even adrenal carcinomas. So this is a case of thyroid malignancy with canal ball metastasis in the lungs. Coming to next quarter, you can see lobulated soft tissue densities noted in the posterior mediastinum at the level of costovertebral junctions with widening or expansion of the ribs, posterior ends of the ribs. So this is classical for extramedullary hematopoiesis. So what is this extramedullary hematopoiesis? It usually affects visceral organs like liver, spleen, lymph nodes and even involves the thorax. So in the thorax, it is classical location is on the costovertebral junction, posterior ends of the ribs and in the posterior mediastinum. Less commonly, it can affect pleura, lungs, gastrointestinal tract, breast, skin, brain, kidneys and adrenal glands. So consider myeloproliferative disorders and hemoglobinopathies when you see this extramedullary hematopoiesis. Coming to next spotter, you can see, I'll show you the... You can see this is the collapsed lung. You can see this is the free air surrounding the collapsed lung which is devoid of lung markings. There is mild widening of the intercostal spaces. There is mild hemidiaphragm depression and even shift of mediastinum to the opposite side. So there is pneumothorax. But what is the specialty of the pneumothorax? This is a tension pneumothorax. So what is this tension pneumothorax? There is air accumulation due to ball valve mechanism leading to increased intrathoracic pressure which is causing widening of the intercostal space, 
a mediastinomatic depression and shift of the mediastinum to opposite side. So this is a case of tension pneumothorax. So immediate decompression is important to prevent cardiorespiratory arrest and death. Coming to next case, you can see there is classical dilatation of the main pulmonary artery, even right branch of the pulmonary artery, even right ventricular hypertrophy. This is all the right ventricular hypertrophy. So this is and even pulmonary oligemia. So this is a case of pulmonary arterial hypertension. Remember, dilated main pulmonary artery, right main branch, pulmonary oligemia with hypertrophy of the right ventricle and upturned right apex. Coming to next spotter, you can see this classical bat wing appearance. This is a case of pulmonary edema. Coming to the next case, you can see there is diffuse cardiomegaly involving all the chambers. There is mild increased vascularity in the perihelar locations. And you can see tiny nodular calcified foci scattered in bilateral mid and lower zones. So this is a case of cardiomegaly with congestive cardiac failure and hemosiderosis. So this is these calcified foci, tiny nodular calcified foci scattered in mid and lower zones are nothing but hemosiderosis. So this hemosiderosis is due to increased pulmonary arterial or capillary pressure which causes pulmonary capillary damage leading to pulmonary hemorrhage and deposition of iron in the lung, adjacent lung. So in severe cases it can, or you can also see calcifications and even pulmonary ossifications. So you, there is primary pulmonary hemosiderosis and secondary pulmonary hemosiderosis. Secondary pulmonary hemosiderosis is due to mitral stenosis. Primary pulmonary hemosiderosis can be associated with good pasture syndrome or hypersensitive proteins in cow's milk that is Hener syndrome and sometimes idiopathic pulmonary he hemosiderosis. So classically remember this is hemosiderosis. And this can be also seen in cardiomyopathy with CCF also. Coming to next spotter, you can see there is straightening of the left heart border, prominent left atrial appendage. You can see double density shadow in the retrocardiac location, which is causing widening of the subcarinal angle with mild perihelar congestion. So this is classical case of mitral alveolar disease, likely due to mitral stenosis. Coming to next case, this is an interesting case. You can see there is a dilatation of the superior vena cava, even brachiocephalic vein, and there is a dilated structure on the left side, which is probably the left vertical vein. So these three structures, and along with the dilated right atrium, gives the classical snowman appearance. So this classical snowman appearance is seen in supracardiac TAPVC that is total anomalous pulmonary venous circulation. There are three types either supracardiac, cardiac and infracardiac. And in this supracardiac TAPVC these pulmonary veins either converge into left vertical vein which drains into either brachiocephalic vein, SVC or azygous vein. So this supracardiac variant will depict a classical snowman appearance. So what is the snowman appearance I will show in the next image with pictorial depiction. So this is the pictorial depiction. You can see the red half. So this is the head. This is the body. So right half. This is the dilated SVC. On the top of it, this is the brachiocephalic vein. And this is the left vertical vein. And the body is formed by enlarged right atrium. So this is the classical snowman appearance or figure of eight appearance or cottage leaf heart, cottage loaf heart. So remember this snowman appearance. So right half SVC, top of the head is brachiocephalic and the left half is by the left vertical vein and the body is by the dilated right atrium. Coming to next case, you can see there are two cases but the diagnosis is same. You can see there is prominent ascending aorta, arch of aorta but the descending aorta is not seen. And there is classical inferior rib notching. So whenever a spotter is kept in the exam and you are not able to find any other pro abnormal finding, try to see the ribs. So mostly it may be a case of coarctation of iota. And also see the hidden zones like behind the ribs, behind the first rib, epices of lungs, hilar regions, even costophrenic angles, retrocardiac locations. So these are hidden zones. Try to see in those locations for findings. So this bilateral inferior rib notching is most commonly seen between 6 to 9 ribs 
and is classically seen of co-optation of aorta which is due to dilated intercostal vessels causing subperiosteal bone resorption. So other causes of bilateral inferior lobe notching can be seen in SVC obstruction, arteriovenous malformations, Takayasu's disease, tetralogy of phthalate, schwannomas, NF1 and other, other, other causes. And sometimes superior rib notching is also seen. Remember, oxygen is imperfecta, connective tissue disorders, hyperparathyroidism can cause superior rib notching. So this is the classical figure of three appearance. These are the dilated segments and this is the constricted segment. So pre-stenotic and post-stenotic dilatation with constriction at the level of stenotic segment. This gives the classical three appearance. Similar case, this is the other case, but this is also case of coarctation aorta. You can see dilated ascending aorta, arch of aorta, but the descending aorta is not seen with inferior rib notching. This is the CT of that case. You can see this is post-ductal stenotic segment and the dilatation. That is arch of uh, ascending aorta, arch of aorta and the descending aorta. So this is the constricted segment. Coming to next case, this is a classical case. You can see there is dilatation of the upturned apex on the left side. This is the concavity at the level of pulmonary bay and mild prominent perivascular in the perihala region. There is increased vascularity. So this is a case of tetralogy of phthalate. So what is this tetralogy of phthalate? This is characterized by boot shaped heart. What is this boot shaped heart? This tetralogy of phthalate is can seen in ventricular septal defects. Even right outflow, ventricular outflow obstruction will be there either due to infundibular stenosis or hypoplastic pulmonary wall annulus, bicuspid pulmonary wall or hypoplasia of the pulmonary artery. And what are the four components in tetralogy of phthalate? There will be VSD, right ventricular outflow tract as we have discussed, overriding of arch of iota and right ventricular hypertrophy. So we will see what is this boot shaped heart. You can see this there is a concavity followed by convexity. So this concavity is green arrow which is indicated by hyperplasia of the pulmonary artery and this convexity is due to right ventricular hypertrophy causing upturned apex. So this is the classical boot shaped heart. Concavity is due to hyperplasia of the pulmonary artery. Convexity is due to right ventricular hypertrophy causing upturned right apex, cardiac apex. Coming to next case, this is also a classical case. You can see the box shaped heart. So what is this box shaped heart or box shaped configuration of heart which is seen in Epstein anomaly that is congenital tricuspid regurgitation which will cause enlargement of the right atrium and hyperplasia of the pulmonary trunk. So this is the depiction you can see box shaped heart and this is the pictorial depiction you can see the movement of flow of the blood this is the tricuspid valve and there is downward displacement of the tricuspid valve causing atrialization of the ventricle. So this is atrialization of the ventricle, downward displacement of the tricuspid valves, hyperplasia of the pulmonary trunk and even this is the ASD which is important for survival. So this, this dilated right atrium with tricuspid regurgitation and right ventricular enlargement also will give this classical box shaped heart. So remember box shaped heart in Epstein's anomaly. And this is the journal you can see, you can read there is classic imaging signs of congenital cardiovascular abnormalities which gives all the signs in congenital cardiovascular disease. Coming to next spotter you can see there are multiple tiny nodular calcifications scattered in bilateral lung fields. Even there is plural calcifications and the CT of the same case you can see multiple nodular calcifications scattered in bilateral lung fields pleural calcification, pericardial calcification, even diaphragmatic calcification and mediastinal calcification. So this is a classical case of pulmonary alveolar microlithiasis. What is this pulmonary alveolar microlithiasis which is due to mutation in SLC34A2 gene that causes inactivation of sodium dependent phosphate co-transporter. This co-transporter is normally seen in alveolar type 2 cells. Because of this lack of transporter from the degraded surfactant, the inactivated form leads to accumulation of the phosphate in the alveolus. So there is calcium phosphate deposition in the microliths. So these are calcium phosphate microliths. So these gives the classical sand-like calcifications. So this is a case of pulmonary alveolar microlithiasis. 
Hamilton exporter, you can see there are multiple calcifications in the right kidney. There is fatty replacement of the renal parenchyma with perinephric fat stranding. And there is hypoenhancing collection in the right psoas muscle with peripheral rimic enhancement. And here also you can see this is a classical case of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis with right psoas abscess. Coming to next potter, you can see there is a enhancing soft tissue sensitivity mass lesion in the anterior mediastinum. This lesion is insinuating between the great vessels and there is gross moderate to gross pleural effusion and there are nodular deposits noted along the pleura. Nodular deposits noted along the pleura and the anterior mediastinal mass. So in a young patient, he is 31 years male. So this is a classical case of thymoma because there are this is not a seminoma or germ cell tumor because there are no calcifications no fat densities and and with along with that this this is a case of thymoma with drop metastasis so this is the primary with drop metastasis so you have heard of drop metastasis in the spine from brain but this is a case of drop metastasis of thymoma with drop metastasis in the pleura so remember also drop metastasis in lung when there is a primary in the thymoma Coming to next case, you can see there is a hypoenhancing, heterogeneously enhancing mass lesion in the right kidney with right renal vein thrombosis, even extending into the IVC and extending up to the right atrium. So this is a case of classical case of renal cell carcinoma with tumor thrombus in the right renal vein, extending into the IVC and even up to the right atrium. So coming to the next case, so this is a classical case. You can see there is smooth surface of the brain hourglass appearance of the brain or figure of eight appearance of the brain there is a gyria or pachygyria and there are band like heterotopic gray matter this is that band like heterotopic gray matter and you can see even periventricular calcifications so this is a classical case of lysencephaly pachygyria spectrum which can be type 1 and type 2 type 1 is classical with band heterotopia likely band heterotopia type 2 is cobblestone complex type 1 lysencephaly typically presents with marked hypotonia and positive of movement type 2 lysencephaly is associated with muscular dystrophy like syndromes like walker warbeck syndrome fukuyama disease or muscle eye brain disease that is meb disease so here this lysencephaly pachygyria complex is likely with periventricular calcification is likely secondary to cmv cytomegalovirus so this is that hourglass thing you can remember so there is dilatation, dilatation with narrowing. So this is the brain also resembles this hourglass appearance. So this is a classical case of lysencephaly pachygyria spectrum type 1. Coming to next case, you can see there is abnormal CSF cleft seen extending from the ventricle up to the cortical surface. And here also there is an abnormal cleft directly opening into the extraaxial CSF spaces. So this is open lip and closed lip cephaly. Both are depicted in a single case. Coming to next case, there are multiple calcified foci noted in the capsular ganglionic region and even in the periventricular location. So this is classical for FARS syndrome or FARS disease, which is bilateral striato pallido dentate calcinosis and which is characterized by abnormal vascular calcium deposition, particularly in basal ganglia, dentate nuclei, white matter and followed by subsequent atrophy. Coming to next case, you can see intensely enhancing mass lesion noted at the level of carotid bifurcation which is causing playing of the ICA and ECA. So this is a classical case of carotid body tumor or chemodectoma which is nothing but highly vascular glomus tumor that arises from paraganglion cells of the carotid body. It is, it is located at the level of carotid bifurcation and commonly these occur in 4th and 5th decades and have a female predilection. And these are the most common paraganglionomas of head and neck. So classical case of carotid bomb tumor or chemodectoma. Coming to next case, you can see this is the classical whirlpool sign. There is twisting of the mesentery, twisting of the vasculature with small bowel dilatation. So this is a classical case of midgut valves with whirlpool sign. This is that whirlpool sign due to twisting of mesentery or vessels. And it can be associated with malrotation. Coming to next quarter, I think you have come to a diagnosis, I don't, I don't know, but here you can see the pancreas is not visualized. 
so pancreas head body and tail of the pancreas is completely replaced by fat and incidentally you have a large cystadenoma probably arising from the ovary so this is a case of pancreatic lipomatosis so what is this pancreatic lipomatosis it is nothing but fatty replacement of the pancreas it can be associated with metabolic syndrome obesity dyslipidemia and diabetes mellitus and sometimes in congenital syndromes there is cystic fibrosis so remember pancreatic lipomatosis in cystic fibrosis other one is fanman diamond syndrome other causes can be chronic pancreatitis even hemosiderosis hemochromatosis even drug induced like corticosteroids sometimes in cushing syndrome and even chronic malnutrition so this is a case of pancreatic lipomatosis with incidentally directed cystadenoma arising from the, probably arising from the left ovary ovary coming to the next case you can see there is a classically there is a mass lesion noted in the cerebellum which is showing abnormal foliar pattern consisting of hyper intensities and hypo intensities so there is alternating bands of hypo inten hyper intensities and hypo intensities abnormal folia there is mild mass effect even on the pontocerebral peduncles and compression of the fourth ventricle no significant enhancement on iv contrast so this classical appearance is nothing but striated or tigrad appearance also described by corduroy or laminated appearance so this is a classical case of lermetri duclos disease also known as dysplastic cerebellar gangliocytoma which is a rare tumor of cerebellum commonly p10 mutations are associated sometimes this may be associated with cowden syndrome so then it may be called as cold syndrome that is cowden syndrome associated with lermetri duclos disease which is considered as one of the phacomatosis so this abnormal hyperintense folia surrounded by hypointensities so this gives that classical tigroid appearance so other less likely differentials can be considered as cerebellitis or subacute infarcts which can be ruled out on follow up scans coming to next spotter you can see this is a classical eye of tiger appearance which can be seen in pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration so what is this eye of tiger sign you can see central high in high areas high signal areas which is due to gliosis and spongiosis surrounded by peripheral hypointensities these peripheral hypointensities are due to accumulation of the iron so classically seen in globus pallidus so bilateral symmetrical hyperintensities surrounded by hypointensities in the globus pallidi e mimicking eye of tiger appearance is classical in pcan that is pantothenate kinase associated neurodegeneration but it can be seen also seen other causes like wilson's disease atypical parkinsonism or op poisonings sometimes even can be seen on 3d magnets in some patients so this is a pictorial deposition this is the eye of tiger appearance these are the these nothing but mimic the eye of tigers coming to next case you can see a dilated vascular structure draining into the straight sinus showing blooming on gre and this is the dilated structure posterior to the third ventricle draining it through the straight sinus into the tolipular heterophyli so this is classical of vena gallen malformation so which is probably termed as median prosencephalic arteriovenous mal fistulas the name is actually due to cerebral arteriovenous fistula of the median prosencephalic vein that is mpv a precursor of vena of gallen which occurs at 6 to 11 weeks of gestation it is actually not a malformation because there is no nidus and it drains into straight sinus so remember two classification that is sargil and lasonia's classifications and what are the complications are thrombosis rupture and high output cardiac failure are the complications coming to next spotter you can see there is hyperintensity in the pons which is classically mimicking trident sign that is trident appearance in the pons even hyperintensity is in the capsular ganglia region so this is not showing blooming on gre and there is no significant restricted diffusion on dw so these hyperintensities in the pons with sparing of the corticospinal tracts gives the classical trident appearance so which is seen in osmotic demyelination syndrome which is nothing but seen in the setting of osmotic changes typically with rapid correction of hyponatremia so this is a case of central pontine myelinosis with extra pontine myelinosis so both cpm and epm in a single case so and this trident sign can also be described as a face of a pig that is piglet sign 
so this is that image you can see this is a face of the sign face of the piglet so this is also called as piglet sign and this is the classical trident sign so this is the hyperintensity in the pons with sparing of the corticospinal tracts so these are the spared areas of corticospinal tracts and these are the hyperintense areas in the pons so this is the trident appearance seen in case of osmotic demyelination syndrome so but this is case this case is cpm and dpm in a single case coming to next quarter you can see hyperintensity in the spinal cord anteriorly there is pll thickening and even you can see hyperintensity in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord so symmetrical hyperintensity in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord which mimics snake eye appearance so what is this snake eye appearance or owl eye or fried eggs appearance these are nothing but hyperintensity in the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord classically seen in spinal cord ischemia but other other cause can also give to snake appearance that is our chronic compressive myelopathy pll thickening hirama disease als or pls nmo neuromyelitis optica or poliomyelitis so this is the classical snake eye appearance so these are the two eyes of a snake this is the classical snake eye appearance seen in case of spinal cord ischemia coming to next case you can see hyperintensity in the spinal cord posteriorly and even posterolaterally and classical inverted v appearance inverted v appearance in the spinal cord involving the posterior columns so this is seen in subacute combined degeneration or vitamin b12 deficiency myelopathy so this is the classical inverted v sign i have depicted here this is the classical inverted v sign nothing but these hyperintensities involving the posterior column will mimic this inverted v sign seen in subacute combined degeneration coming to next case you can see this is a case with mental retardation so and cutaneous findings also so suspicion of neurocutaneous syndrome you can see abnormal sub subependymal nodules projecting into the ventricle these are nothing but mimicking candle wax drip appearance there are abnormal heterotopic gray matter even hyperintensity in the subcortical white matter linear white matter bands are also seen and even few areas showing tuber like structures in the cortex so this is a classical case of tuberous sclerosis so you can see subependymal nodules heterotopic gray matter linear white matter bands and even cortical tubers and other component can be subependymal genital astrocytoma at the level of third ventricle so this is a classical case of tuberous sclerosis coming to next case you can see this is also mental retarded case child with uh, perinatal history of uh, hypoxia and delayed birth and delayed cry after birth so you can see symmetrical hyperintensities in the periventricular location in parieto occipital lobes with mild asymmetrical dilatation of the atrium and occipital also parietal lateral ventricles so these are nothing but gliosis in the periventricular location so this is nothing but periventricular leukomyasia in a case of hie coming to the next case this is a i think somewhat complicated spotter you can see there is a hyperintense cystic lesion in the left temporal lobe convexity this is seen communicating with it of the hyperintense collection along the left fronto temporo parietal lobe convexities there is no hyperintensity on flare there is no restricted diffusion on dwa there is no blooming on gre so restricted diffusion there is no restricted diffusion on dwa so this is not epidermoid cyst and even there is no blooming on gre or no no restricted diffusion on dwa so this is not a hemorrhage and not an infected collection to say it as a empyema so we have seen an uh, hyperintense lesion in the left temporal lobe with no restriction on dwa likely arachnoid cyst but what is this collection here you can see this is this arachnoid cyst but it's it is seen communicating with it of the collection which is extending along the left to fronto temporo parietal lobe convexities which is not showing blooming on gre and not showing restricted diffusion on dwa so this is a case of arachnoid cyst with rupture and leading to subdural hygroma so he is a child he was playing and he fell into the well for swimming and leading to trauma so follow which is incidentally seen which because the patient came later which presented with arachnoid cyst with rupture and leading to spontaneous subdural hygroma this is not spontaneous this is post traumatic subdural hygroma so remember arachnoid cyst the complication is either hemorrhage or secondary infection or rupture with subdural hygromas coming to next case 
you can see there is herniation of the tonsil into the posterior subarachnoid space at the lower cistern magna with syringohydromelia so this is a classical case of acm1 coming to next case you can see there is significant atrophy of the cerebellum with multiple micro bleeds in scattered in bilateral cerebral cerebral hemispheres so this is a classical case of ata ataxia telangiectasia coming to next case he is 17 years male complaints of headache so there is a soft tissue sensitive mass lesion noted in the fourth ventricle level with hemorrhage causing obstruction of the supratentorial ventricular system so this is a classical case of medulloblastoma coming to next case you can see there is intense homogeneous enhancing lesion probably arising from the greater wing of spinod on right side with dural tail sign so this is a case of right spinod wing meningioma coming to next case you can see enhancing collection noted in the basal cistern permeation of resistance and even enhancement there is left meningeal enhancement in the bilateral frontal lobes and along the sylvian fissures and even there is hydrocephalus with periventricular csfos so these are classical enhancing basal exudates with left meningeal enhancement in a case of tubercular meningoencephalitis so these are nothing but enhancing basal exudates and infarcts can be also seen in this case secondary to vasospasm or vasculitis coming to next case this is a classical hot cross bun appearance in a case of msa type c this sign is due to selective loss of myelinated transverse pontocerebellar fibers and neurons in the pontine raphe with preservation of the pontine tegmentum and corticospinal tracts so this is that hot cross bun appearance in msa type c coming to next case you can see there are multiple cysts in the pancreas even cysts in the kidney there is a cystic lesion with enhancing mural nodule in the cerebellum there is a enhancing nodular structure also noted in the csf space in the spine so this is a case of cerebellar hemangioblastoma with drop metastasis and multiple cysts in the pancreas and the kidney so this is a case of von hippel-linda disease coming to next case you can see serpiginous abnormal serpiginous gyral calcification there is ipsilateral atrophy with abnormal serpiginous gyral calcifications so this is a case of stretch weber syndrome coming to last case you can see there is sclerosis of the iliac aspects of the si joints sclerosis typically involving the iliac aspects of the si joints and there is increased uptake the pet ct there is increased uptake and there is no significant involvement of the si joint so this is osteitis condens and ciliae bilateral symmetrical sclerosis involving anterior and middle third involvement is classical in case of osteitis condens and ciliae with no sacral involvement the close differential will be sacral sacroiliitis i hope you have liked the spotters so please subscribe to my channel and share so that it will be useful for all the exam going students and even all the other residents thank you one and all